Welcome back to World of Immersion. Now, it has been quite a long time since our last video, and I'm sorry about that, but now that it is the summer, we have tons of new content coming out. We're going to be having daily videos being released for the next few months, so be sure to stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss when we have brand new videos. But today, we're going to be talking about a park we visited pretty recently, and that is SeaWorld Orlando. Now, it was our first time going back over spring break earlier this year, and we had a great time at the park. Now, I do want to preface this by saying we had a very interesting day. Some of the rides were closed, including Journey to Atlantis and Icebreaker had around a three-hour line all day. So those were two rides we did not get to experience, unfortunately. In addition to that, we had just come from a red-eye flight there that day, so we were super tired. So it was definitely a very difficult day for us, but we still had a ton of fun. It was a great park. I highly recommend visiting. Be sure to check out our full vlog from that day if you haven't already. It is up on the channel. But yeah, today we're going to be counting down the top 10 rides at this park. Now I have chosen to still include these other rides that we weren't able to get on, even though we weren't able to ride them, because I can figure out kind of where they go based on similar rides that we've been on. But just keep that in mind. Now without further ado, let's get right into the video. So currently, at the moment, SeaWorld Orlando doesn't even have 10 full rides that are not kitty rides. So at the bottom of this list, the number 10 is going to be a ride that's opening next year. Now, obviously, I don't think this ride is going to go at number 10 on this list. Penguin Trek, the brand new family B&M launch coaster that's opening this year, I think it would be much higher on this list. But I'm chosen to put it down at the bottom for now because it's not open yet. But it definitely looks like a really great ride. It looks like some decent theming and looks great for a family coaster. We've never seen anything like this from B&M, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this rides. I know it's got very different train designs than the majority of other B&Ms out there. One of the very few two-seater B&Ms. And when we were there, it was almost completed. By now, I'm sure it has been completed, and I think they've even been doing test runs. So it should be opening pretty decently soon. But it looked like a really fun ride with a great layout. So be sure to stay tuned for that if you're visiting the park later this year. Now next, in number 9 is the Sky Tower, another ride that we did not get the chance to experience while we were there because it was closed. However, I've been on the one over at SeaWorld San Diego, and it's a very fun ride. It's not as much of a thrilling ride because it's very, very slow, but it gives you a fantastic view of the whole park. You get to see 360 views around the entire park. It is super cool. I'm sure you get incredible views of the other parks nearby like Disney World and Universal Studios Florida, which is just down the street. So yeah, it's definitely a very great relaxing ride to do in the middle of the day. You get some great views, and I'm sure it's really, really fun. Next coming in, number eight is going to be the park's one and only kiddie coaster, and that is Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. Also a ride we did not get a chance to experience because of how long of a line it got, but that's due to it being the only kiddie coaster in the whole park. Really the only family coaster, too, until the brand new Penguin Trek coaster opens. But it looks like a very fun family coaster. Really not much to say about this ride. Definitely just a great ride for the kids. And coming in at number 7, once again, is another ride we did not get the chance to experience, and that is Journey to Atlantis. Now, I've been on the one the one Journey to Atlantis over at SeaWorld San Diego. However, this one looks much, much significantly better. The theming around this one looks so much better. It, the dark ride scenes from the POVs that I've watched look incredible. The drops also look like a ton of fun. And this ride overall just looks like a much bigger step up from the, the San Diego version. Hopefully get a chance to come back to SeaWorld Orlando at some point to get a chance to experience it because it looked like a really great ride. We kept coming back throughout the day to try to ride it. However, it continued to stay closed, which really sucked because it was definitely one of my most anticipated rides of the park. Now coming at number six is the final ride that we did not get a chance to experience, and that is Icebreaker. Now we didn't get a chance to experience it because the line was super insanely long and they were running one train only, meaning that line would move really, really slow. And we really didn't want to spend two hours almost three hours waiting in a line after taking a red eye and being super exhausted. So we chose to skip it. However, we've been on plenty of other premier rides, launch coasters, and I'm sure it runs pretty similar to this. It's really nice that they just removed the comfort collars on this ride. I'm sure the airtime and everything is a lot better now that it's just the lap bar. And it looks like a really fun coaster overall. It really sucks that we didn't get a chance to experience it though. Now moving on to the top five, all five of these rides we did get a chance to experience and they're all really, really fun. Now, starting off at the beginning of our top five, at number five, we have Kraken. Now, this is definitely one of my favorite floorless coasters I've ever been on. Honestly, I went into this ride with zero expectations, and I came out really pleasantly surprised. 
The first drop is really great. I love when these coasters have straight drops. You give much better airtime than the curved drops like on Scream. And this ride ran pretty smoothly. I had heard it wasn't the smoothest coaster, but honestly, I was really surprised with how smooth it was. The inversions are really great. That second vertical loop is also amazing. And the end of the ride where you're diving through tunnels and coming out into the corkscrews is really intense. Overall, I was really pleasantly surprised with this ride. I, it, my expectations were super low, and it was much better than I thought. However, it's not the best coaster in the park for sure. Now, coming in at number four is the newest coaster to open at the park, and that is Pipeline the Surf Coaster, the world's first launched standing-up coaster from B&M. It's their new version of the stand-up coaster. This is the complete opposite of Kraken for me. I went into this ride with very, very high expectations based on how everybody else had reviewed it, saying it was so much better than every other stand-up coaster, it rode like crazy. It was completely different than anything else experienced before. However, I did not really find that to be the case. Don't get me wrong, it was still an incredible ride, and it's really weird to experience a launch standing up. The airtime is also very cool. However, I just really don't love the layout. The airtime moments were amazing, and that, I think that's what this ride should focus more on. There's really only two airtime moments throughout the whole ride, and those parts are definitely the best part of the ride. But besides that, the rest of it's all positive Gs, and the positive Gs are just kind of uncomfortable. Also, the vest restraints are very, very uncomfortable. They dig into the tops of your shoulders, and it really hurts throughout the whole ride. But like I said, don't get me wrong, this ride is still amazing. I would definitely try to experience it if you get the chance when visiting SeaWorld Orlando. It's a very unique ride, and definitely one of a kind. Now coming in at number three is a ride that very much surprised all of us on our trip, and this was Infinity Falls. This very well may be one of the best, if not the best, River Rapids rides on the planet. Now for starters, the layout is incredible with some of the best rapids and the most intense rapids I've ever experienced. Now you combine that with an incredible soundtrack, some really, really good theming for a SeaWorld park, that elevator lift, and that huge final drop. This ride is just incredible. It's presented in such a great way. The whole area around it is really well themed and it's all very cohesive. The queue is also very nice. And just overall, I was really impressed with this ride. We actually got the chance to experience this ride twice because of how short of a line it happened to be on the day that we went to visit. It wasn't that cold out and the park was really crowded, but for some reason this ride had a very short line. So we just experienced it twice in a row. It was definitely one of my favorite rides of the park and I would highly recommend getting the chance to experience it if you can. Usually that line does get pretty long from what I heard from other people when we were there, but it's such an incredible ride. I would definitely try to do it if you can. Now coming in at number two is Manta, the park's flying coaster. Now this is also one of those rides that I went in with pretty high expectations and was left slightly disappointed. Honestly, compared to my other two favorite flying coasters that I've been on, Tatsu and Flying Dinosaur, it just does not compare to either of those two. Tatsu is much, much more intense and Flying Dinosaur might be the most intense coaster I've ever been on. So going from those two to Manta, it was definitely a very different experience. I definitely prefer it to the likes of Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia and Great Adventure, because that ride is just a lot less intense and a, a lot more boring than this one. But this one did not hit as hard as those other flying coasters that I mentioned before. The visuals in this ride are great. The second half is really fun, swooping over the water and diving and twisting. It's really cool. And the theming of this ride is really cool. The queue is also great with the actual manta rays that you can see when you're walking through the queue. And the layout's pretty fun. Just like I said, it was not anywhere near as intense as the other flying coasters I've been on, so that, I think that's why I came off just slightly disappointed. Now coming in at number one, this should be no surprise to anyone, is Mako, the park's B&M hypercoaster. Now this ride, we went in with very high expectations and came off even more impressed than I thought we would be. This is by far my favorite B&M hyper I've been on so far. It's just got insane airtime. That setting across the lake on the back of the park is incredible. You get some amazing views of everything. We could even see Epic Universe when we were at the top of this lift. And overall, this ride was just so much fun. It's got some of the best airtime I've experienced on a hyper coaster. It's super buttery smooth. If you sit in that back row, that first drop is amazing as well. The only part that doesn't really do it for me is that second half. It feels a little bit slow and it doesn't run as fast as I wish it would. But this is also one of those rides that we got a chance to experience multiple times on our visit. I think we rode it three times. That line moves very fast because of how much capacity this ride has. And just overall, it's such an incredible ride. I would recommend visiting SeaWorld Orlando just for this ride alone if you get the chance to. It's seriously an incredible coaster and really blew our expectations out of the water. But that's gonna do it for ranking the top 10 rides at SeaWorld Orlando. If you haven't already, be sure to check out all of our other videos from our Orlando trip that we just went on. We're going to be having rankings out from every other park that we visited, all 10 parks. That's right, we visited 10 parks in six days. So be sure to check out those other rankings when we get a chance. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss when we have brand new content. 
and be sure to hit that like button and comment down below what you think of SeaWorld Orlando if you've been, as well as what your favorite ride is. Thank you so much for watching World of Immersion today. We'll catch you in the next video.